Well, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. I know it's probably late on the uh, East Coast side of things, and uh, I know there's a hurricane headed that way. Uh, if you are in North Carolina, the Virginias, uh, on that Florida coast that way, um, just East Coast, and Virginia, uh, East Coast um, period, you know, just want to keep you in our prayers tonight. i uh, definitely let you know that uh, we're definitely going to do that. I mean, boy, them hurricanes is nothing to play with. So if you can get to safety, do that. And uh, be safe this evening as, uh, you know, as you're about to enter some dangerous weather, you know. So I appreciate that. Good evening, brother. Good evening, Brother Nichols. So, you know, tonight uh, I'm going to talk about the General Grand Lodge for the United States. Tonight I'm going to shed a little history that some of you may or may not know. It is called the General Grand Lodge of the United States. That's very interesting, isn't it? And I say that because as I began to do my own research and to look at various Congresses and where did this ideal originate from, uh, the first ideal, the very first ideal was called the General Grand Lodge for the United States. This ideal came about at the formation uh, of, the, of, of the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts. We're talking 17... Uh, 78, 1779. This is the year uh, that here in the United States that they were speaking of a general grand lodge for the United States. Uh, and President, and at that time they was looking at uh, General Washington. Uh, president Washington was going to be the president for the general grand lodge of the United States. Okay, hear me clearly. This was an idea that was, that, hey, what's up, what's up, Brother Terrell? So this was an idea that was brought out, man, and I was like, wow, General Grand Lodge of the United States. Now, just think of this. What if there were a General Grand Lodge of the United States? What if there were? That idea almost happened, and it was the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts that sort of that sort of shut that idea down. Now imagine, at that time, General George Washington was being uh, considered the president for the General Grand Lodge of the United States. And then it goes on. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, it goes on, and I'm going to share some more uh, uh, congresses that came about around that time. So. It wasn't until the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts, which was the first Grand Lodge that was chartered here in the United States through Scotland, okay? They was chartered through Scotland. And when the idea began to kick around, it got back. Um, you know, a lot of people really spoke unfavorably about it. They didn't really like it. What's up? Good evening. Good evening, brothers. They didn't really like the fact that there was going to be a general Grand uh, laws for the United States. So they really shot it down. Let me tell you, this happened between the year 1778 and 1779. Okay. And, 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 and in this whole thing, it was like, wow. And then you have a thing they was going to call the general grand masters. Okay. The general grand master, this system was adopted by the general grand chapter, of Royal Arch Masons. I didn't know that. General Grand Masters. Yeah. So when I think about the concept of uh, the, the, the compact of Grand Lodges, uh, for which at one time all African Lodges was under or with, that concept wasn't a, uh, wasn't a original idea. It, it was not, you know, um, uh, it was a great idea, as a matter of fact. I would say that. I would say that the Compact of Grand Lodges was a great idea. And as we know, uh, as history would have it and teaches you, if you indulge yourself, that <clears throat> many of the Grand Lodges that helped to formulate the Compact of Grand Lodges left that system, you know. Uh, but the Compact of Grand Lodges, which is known as the National compact the Grand Lodge is still viable. It is a still viable system. And they practice the ancient accepted York Rite Freemasonry, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can look that up for me. That is what they consider pre-PHA, Prince Hall 
origin. Um, and then you have PHA Prince Hall affiliation, which come out of the compact of Grand Lodge. So let's let's have an understanding about that. Now check this out. I'm gonna share this with you. So the concept of the General Grand Lodge for the United States, and then they had a thing called the General Grand Masses for the Royal Arch. And you're saying, where are you getting this information from? Well, bro, I'm just getting, I have a couple of books, and I'm like going through them, and I'm like, wow, I think this is some good information to just share with you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip on over here. So not only did they have that, so in, in, there was another process of bringing all of the Grand Lodges together in the United States. And that was in 1785. And this says the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania proposed at a convention of delegates of all Grand Lodges for the only purpose of conferring together the mutual advice. By 1790, the Grand Lodge of Georgia had become convinced of the merit of a national Grand Master. <laughs> Them boys was so awesome. They was talking about a national grand master. Hmm? So you go from the th from the thinking of a uh, uh from from the thinking, oh yeah, build a library, bro, build a library. So they go from the thinking of a general grand lodge for the United States until they come to the concept of a general grand master for the United States. This happened in 1785. Now check this out. Now in in 1799, in 1799, the Grand Lodge of South Carolina, okay, the Grand Lodge of South Carolina reviewed the subject, okay, and recommended a convention in the city of Washington, D.C. for the purpose of establishing lodges of America. I mean, that's the same concept that that the compact the Grand Lodge was part of, it's the same con uh, concept as the General Grand Masonic Congresses. It's the same concept. So when they go to tell you that you're bogus and all this stuff, that, that's the same thing, bro. I spoke about 1790, then I spoke about 1799. Now we're gonna go on down. So we're gonna look at the reference in regards to 1797. Several, uh, Several several people began to attack Freemason. You know, Freemason went through this downward spiral. We're looking at 1797 uh, when uh, people really kind of start looking at Freemason from from another perspective because too many individuals who were part of Freemason was in top level positions here in the United States. A, a matter of fact, around the world. So they began to look at Masonry as a concept of these guys are trying to take over the world thing. So. This is where this idea comes from because you have individuals who are Masons there are in that are in top positions regardless of where they may be at, but a lot of them are in government, a lot of them are just in the walk of life period. So that concept of saying where well, the Freemasons are trying to take over the world and they're trying to do this and do that, that's where it comes from. Okay? So let's move on forward. All right? So in 1779, no, in 1797, it says most Grand Lodges was favorable towards the conventions to procure and unify, but were opposed of establishing a Grand General Grand Lodge. And this was through North Carolina. Okay, so you go back to 1807, it said it came out to be favorable. Okay, they was going to ferry this thing and make it fine. All Grand Lodges in America and saying it was only going to be one. Period. Person running the show. That's it. The same concept they have now, but it's not a you. It's not considered. Uh, okay. What book is this? This is called. I'm gonna share this book with you. This is the book. Okay. This is the book right here, and it's on page. I'm looking on page two seventy three right now. Okay, this is the 1961 version, and I'll tell you something about when you get books that's been revised, man, they leave out a lot of information. I have a revised copy. Hardly any of this is in here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share something with you that's gonna be shocking in just a minute. So, as we move forward with this concept, all right, as they move forward with this concept, it came again in 1811. It happened again in 1812. It came up again in 1822. 
Okay, it came up again between 1826 and 1844. They were still trying to push this thing of one Grand Master over the United Grand Lodge of America. Okay, and then not only that, so we get to 1842. It says here in 1842, it says, according to representatives who met at Washington, D.C. in March 7, 1842, to form a Grand Lodge of Maryland, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, New York, District of Columbus, Connecticut, Alabama, Virginia. Delegates were present from Michigan, but were not seated in a session. Four days. They had a four-day session in 1842 trying to make this thing happen. <laughs> Poor secretaries. <laughs> Yeah, so they really tried to push this thing. That was in 1842, so they came back in 1843. They said the meeting on the date was in 1843. They met from uh, May 16th, okay? They met from, yeah, they said the date was May 16th. 23 Grand Lodges represented. It was 23 Grand Lodges that tried to formulate this United Grand Lodge of America, okay? And then, uh, it, and they list the names too. So then they go on to say, it go back to 1845. It says the Grand Lodge of Maryland called a convention of Grand Lodges to meet in Baltimore on September the 23rd, 1847, for the purpose of drafting a constitution for the General Grand Lodge. Although only seven Grand Lodges were represented, the delegates proceeded to draft a constitution for the Supreme Grand Lodge of the United States. Them boys wasn't playing. Them boys was trying to make this thing a reality. They was really pushing it. Okay? So, it goes on from there. And I'm going I'm to I'm I'm take it on down. So, they, they had a meeting again. And so, they met again in 1850. Okay? It says the Grand Lodge of Texas um, was there. The Grand Lodge of Texas expressed the idea the formation of a general Grand Lodge would not accomplish the desires and ends, uh, the same feeling and spirits that now lead to the uh, the difficult between the different Grand Lodges would produce insubordinate and disobedience of the edicts of a general Grand Lodge. Them boys was pushing the fact that they wanted one Grand Master with multiple Grand Lodges and that person was going to be the it factor. And it almost happened. Could you believe it? I, I did until I went to look and I was like, that's going to be, that would have been very interesting. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Could you imagine the dudes that could have been collected? Yes, bruh. You talking about rolling. Oh my goodness. One Grand Master overseeing all the Grand Lodges. And it's called the United Grand Lodges of the United Grand Lodges of the United States. And, gen and it was called uh, and Grand Masters. One Grand Masters over all of that. One. Bruh, you talking about somebody that has some power. I mean, whoa, when you really look at it. So we're going to go on down. Now, check this out. Now, so... At the annual communication of the Grand Lodge of Maine in 1851, the Committee of Foreign Correspondence was instructed to urge and upon the various Grand Lodges the necessity for a general Grand Lodge. They were still pushing the issue in 1851. They pushed the issue again in 1853. Wow. They was really, really trying to make this happen. So, now they go, and I'm going to take you up a little bit. So they said that they had, let's see. Okay, so the plan was to have each Grand Lodge to pledge itself to abide by the decision rendered after they had this convention. Okay? To implement the plans to further meeting the delegates was set forth in January 1855. So I'm taking you year by year how they tried to push this idea of, the, of a uh, uh, general Grand United States uh, Lodge. Let me see what's the name. The original name was General Grand Lodges for the United States. They was really trying to push this thing. Greeting, Brother Phil Jackson. So, it didn't stop there, brother. So, you go on to 1855. So, they had a convention in Washington, D.C. They moved that matter on down 
to the next convention. As a matter of fact, they ratified the decision. Okay, then they moved it on down to 1859. They met again in 1859, September 13, 1859, at which the following Grand Lodge was represented. Arkansas, California, District of Columbus, Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, Maine, Mississippi, New Hampshire, uh, New York, South Carolina, uh, Vermont, uh, let me see, Tennessee, Alabama, Rhode Island, Wisconsin. All of those Grand Lodges were present trying to push for a general Grand uh, Lodge for the United States. And I'm like, man, that's deep. Now, this is very interesting. You listen very closely to this. They state, they state, I'm talking about, when I say they state, I'm going to show you who I'm talking about. So nobody won't be saying, well, who is he talking about? I'm going to show you what they state. This is what they state. Okay, this is what they state, okay? I'm going to read you some what they state, all right? And I'm going to tell you if this sounds familiar to you, to you. So they state, they state this, the last Masonic Congress was held in the United States in Chicago, 1893, which devoted its attention to the principles, to the, to the ritualistic reversion, revision of the reform. But even that slight moment, in the directions of to unite uh, Grand Lodges was unobtainable uh, to the most Grand Lodges. Look at the year. Anybody can recall that year? They talking 1803. They said the last Masonic Congress was held in the United States in 1893. What happened in 1893? And where did it and where did it happen? In Chicago. And who was in Chicago in 1893, y'all? Let's see. This is what happened in 1893. All right? This is what happened in 1893. And they said the last General Grand Masonic of Congress happened in 1893. They said that on in their book on page 273. That's very interesting, isn't it? Isn't that the year of the formation of the Shriners in Chicago at the World's Fair? Isn't that the year that John G. Jones was uh, created a Shriner? I'm just saying, I'm just looking at it for what's written long before I got on board. And I'm like, wow, okay, so we can move on from there, all right? And then it says, the Chicago Congress of 1893 also reached the same. Let me see. There came up. It, the Chicago Congress of 1893 also reached something. Also came about through something that was different. The landmarks of Freemason, which is presumably the same thing. The definition read: the ancient landmarks are those fundamental principles which character which categorized masonry as defined by its charges of freemasonry and without which the institution cannot be identified as masonry now that goes to tell you this that a general grand masonic congress is not a masonic institution listen closely the general grand masonic congress is not a masonic institution it cannot. Let me tell you what it cannot do. Now, <clears throat> the General Grand Masonic Congress, as we know it today, I'm speaking specifically to uh, my brothers of the ancient free and accepted Masons. You know who you are. I'm, I'm speaking specifically to you. The General Grand Masonic Congress can neither formulate, that means make a Grand Lodge, it cannot charter a Grand Lodge, nor can it issue dues cards to members of any Grand Lodge, okay? Because it is not a Masonic institution, okay? The General Grand Masonic Congress was brought about to unify and to make sure that all Grand Lodges that's which came together to formulate this body 
worked the same, operated the same, did its ritualistic work the same. So if you visit those grand lodges within that General Grand Son of Congress, everyone will be on the same page. That's why you had the General Grand Son of Congress. That's why you have it. And this is why you have the Congress of Grand Masters. This is why you have the, uh, uh, I think they call it the uh, Council of Grand Lodges of North America. That's what they call it. So it's, it's a few entities you should take a look at. One entity you're going to take a look at is called the Grand Masters Council. Another entity you need to take a look at is the General Grand Masson of Congress. Congress is because it's like five or six of them right now. And then you're going to take the look at, at uh, a Council of Grand Masters, PHA, okay? And uh, there is one for PHO, but I don't recall the name of it right now, okay? So take a look at that, and you would then come, you have to find your own conclusion. My conclusion is, is that the institution that we know of as the General Grand Masonic Congress is not a Masonic institution. This is why it is called the individual who's, 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 who's elected is the president. That person is called the president of the General Grand Masonic Congress because he cannot be the Grand Master of a Grand Master. And they have no authority over individuals. The only authority that a General Grand Masonic Congress have is to bring in other Grand Lodges that they recognize. Okay? That's it. The president of the General Grand Masonic Congress really should not be installing officers of Grand Lodges because he's a president elected. So tell me why I was meeting a lodge member. So tell me why I was meeting a lodge member and they talk to me like the Masonic Congress is in a, because they don't know brother Terrell. They don't know bruh. They don't. Everybody put their general grand on the son of Congress up here. Well, my gen, my gen, my, you know, your grand lodge is the last say so. That's it. When your grand master said that's it, it's done. Now, anytime you have a grand master that submits to the general grand son of Congress or bend to the will of the general grand son of Congress as far as saying, okay, you know what? <sighs> He's then releasing his authority because the Grand Master has the last word in his state. He could, the Grand Lodge can recognize any other Grand Lodge they choose to. Period. Who, initi who initiated uh, Brother John G. Jones? Okay, Brother John G. Jones was initiated in the Grand Lodge of Illinois. Okay? Everybody knows that. What everybody doesn't know is really why was he expelled? A lot of people say he was expelled because he was associating with considerably what they would call clandestine masons, but nobody never says who those clandestine masons were. Some people say it was because of clemency that he had a disagreement uh, with the Grand Lodge of Illinois. I haven't, you know, I've the only documents I've ever seen uh, in regards to Jones being initiated or expelled or whatever was from somebody uh, from Prince Hall. Who, who showed it to me. I have never seen the original documents. I want to see the original documents. That has never been brought forth. Never. Yes, each Grand Lodge is its own headquarters. However, in saying that, I know of Grand Lodges who bend to the will of uh, the General Grand Masson of Congress or Congress of Grand Lodges. I, I, I've seen them. I have. And, and it's, it shouldn't be that way. But when individuals don't understand who they are, then they do. I mean, we have a lot of young grandmasters who become grandmasters at 30, 40, 50 years old. And no, I'm going to take that back. I say 30 and 40, okay? But when you don't read and understand who you are as grandmaster of your state, then you will bend to the will of a general grandmaster. 
uh, Masonic Congress, the, the president. You will, you will, because you don't know the authority that you have as a grand master. So yeah, you'll be like, oh man, yeah. I want to be part of this Congress so bad, yeah. Uh, okay, if you say so. No, you're the grand master in your state. You really, let the truth be told, a Grand Lodge doesn't really need a General Grand Masonic Congress. What you do need is a Supreme Council. And the only reason you need a Supreme Council is because of those individuals or members who want to move into the appending bodies on the York right or Scottish right side. Then you would have a Supreme Council that your members can become part of. That's it, brothers. And sisters, too. Let, let me clear the air on this. The sisters need a Grand Lodge. A Grand Lodge don't need the sisters. I don't know. I don't know why sisters, and not all, but some sisters, some Grand Matrons believe that they have more authority than the Grand Master. And you don't. I'm not saying the Grand Master should be doggish or any of that. I'm saying that the Grand Master should respect that Grand Matron as she runs that Grand Chapter within the boundaries of her constitution, period. The Grand Master should support that Grand Matron. He should uh, show her respect because she's showing him respect. But to go in and try to take over and rule her like her husband? No, that's not what that's meant to be. It's really not. But somehow we got that all screwed up. Okay, they are, they're at will. In pleasure of the Grand Master. Absolutely. The Grand Master rules, I don't want to say rules, but the Grand Master governs as Grand Patron unless he selects someone to be the Grand Patron for the Order of the Eastern Star. Unless he selects a patron to go over and handle that situation, he is the Grand Patron of State for the Order of the Eastern Star, which works with that Grand Lodge. And let me tell you this here. Only a Grand Lodge can charter a Grand Chapter. Booyah! Yes, a Grand Lodge can charter a Grand Chapter. A Grand Chapter cannot charter itself, nor can a Supreme Grand Chapter charter a Grand Chapter. Hear me clearly. A Supreme Grand Chapter cannot charter a Grand Chapter of State. Only a Grand Lodge can charter a Grand Chapter of State. That's true because that's who they work under. Now, can a grand chapter withdraw membership from a grand lodge? You can. You can. You best believe you may lose your name. You might lose your name if your grand if a grand chapter withdraw membership from that grand lodge. Say we no longer want to work up under you. We will work up under another grand lodge. You might lose your name. Period. The only way you'll probably be able to maintain that full name, the whole grand chapter has to go. I mean, everybody has to go. I'm, you can't leave not one soul. Because if, if you have 20 chapters to formulate that grand chapter, and 10 of those chapters wants to remain with that grand lodge, you can't take the name, nor can you take the money, nor can you take the regalia. You know why? Because that grand chapter is still intact because there are 10 chapters there to maintain it. It's just that simple. So a lot of grand chapters believe that we'll leave. Where are you going to leave and go? If that grand lodge charters that grand chapter, the name stays with it unless everybody goes. Everybody has to leave. If everybody doesn't leave and you still got several chapters there that want to work with that Grand Lodge, wants to be there with that Grand Lodge, the charter stays, the bank book stays, the regalia stays, all of it stays. It's written in law because the Grand Lodge formulates the Grand Chapter. That's here in the United States. All right? How that ritual coming along. <laughs> Brother Rob Lowe, it is a task. Let me tell you, I'm working, man, and then I try to get into it when I can. That ritual is a task. I, I tell you what I do have. I have first, second, and third degree. It's all complete, but I got to go in, and what I'm trying to do is put in uh, um, 
African, the African contacts. You know what I mean? Um, put that in so when a person read it, it's coming from an uh, African point of view and not a European point of view. That's where I'm at with it. Miss you here for the Supreme. Here in, oh, yeah, I was there, bro. It, it was nice, Brother Junior. I had a great time. I had a great time and visit. So when you look at the General Grand Masonic Congress, brothers, the reason the person is a president is because he can't be over Grand Masters. A Grand Master can't be over Grand Masters. That's a fact. It, it is what it is. So now I'm going to get into something else real quick here. Give me just a minute. I got I to gotta look it up because this is going to be interesting, too. This was sent to me uh, by Brother uh, White uh, out of Pomona. Very good brother of mine. And I, and I want to let him know if he's watching tonight. I appreciate him. Let me see. Let me see if I can. Oh, there you go. Brother White from Pomona, he be hooking me up with some stuff. I mean, he be like, bro, check this out. So... It had been asked of me, you know, do I know the history of modern Freemasonry? Do I know? No, I don't know the history of modern Freemasonry. However, since I did know the history of modern Freemasonry, uh, Brother White decided to send it to me. And what I discovered in the history of modern Freemasonry, the formation of modern Freemasonry is different. It's different. They are more. They are built more so on a Christian organization than a fraternal organization. Yeah, I, I'm telling you what I read, and you can also read this yourself. And this is no disrespect to them. Uh, you can you can go to their website, Modern Free and Accepted Masons of the World. Okay. Supreme Grand Lodge. You can go to their website and it gives you their history. And as I read their history, which they pretty well, they, 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 they put it out there for you. It's built more so on a Christian type of standards than anything else. Okay? Just so you know. That's how this whole, that's how they are pretty much uh, sanctioned. Okay, and let's see, what else? Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's, that's about it. I, I would tell you that in my reading and trying to kind of get a better understanding, that's what I've, that's what I've got. So if anybody else got anything else they want to add, I'm certainly open to it. However, I can I can definitely say that modern free uh, Mason, as as it is known today, uh, with their headquarters buildings in Columbus, Georgia, I can say that it's built more so on a Christian foundation than a Masonic foundation. They use the principles of Freemason, but it's more so established as a Christian organization. That's according to their own uh, website. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to read some to you. It says, modern free requirements for a national leader. Okay, no, that's not what I want to read. Uh, just tells me what they at. Okay, they modern Freemason got got a lot going on. I give them that they have a lot going on, bro. You know, they're a pretty nice size organization. They have a lot going on. So, this is what I do like about Modern Free. They claim this is something they claim. They said we shall establish major educational program providing training and scholarships for our mem members in general. That's a lot. I'm just saying. For them to put that out there. They said that they shall establish major educational program providing training and scholarships for their members. That's a lot. I, I, I don't know anybody else that's making that claim. But hey, more power to modern free. Much respect for them. 
It says, also it says, modern Freemasonry Incorporated shall increase its members and territories. We shall set the order on a stronger economic base, providing more benefits for our members and their offspring. We shall expand the present headquarters into a mutual complex, including major conventions and facilities, meeting rooms, and other amenities for our youth and senior citizens. Who? Recognition and respect for all modern free and corporate by, by all uh, Masonic bodies in our communities throughout the various countries. They got a nice little format laid out. I, you know what? I, I can't kick modern free. That's how they do it. I was raised in a national Masonic unit. I came to ancient free and then, okay, all right. So, Brother West, what did you think about Modern Free? Uh, you, I think you said national. Was that national? Okay, I was raised in a national Masonic unit. Ex explain, explain to me the national Masonic unit, Brother West, if you can. You know, you can type a little something out for me, and I appreciate it. Oh, Brother Rob Lowe. Okay, so Brother Rob Lowe said, how did Masonry take such a Christian turn knowing it wasn't any christians and oh man let me break that down to you brother rob Lowe. so this is what happened <laughs> this is what happened so united states is a what nation i'll wait a christian nation yeah that's how it came to be however they didn't do a whole lot to change the ritual because everything they talk about is over in Africa, the continent. Think about that. So that's how it became to be such a Christianized organization. But Modern Free took it to another level and incorporated not only the Christian principles, but the Freemasonry principles and brought it into play. So they made it that you couldn't you had to be a christian per se and be part of modern free now this is what i get from reading their history somebody else may get something a little different but that's what i get because that's how they're structured and i'll tell you this here most prince hall lodges grand lodges have a very strong christian base period I mean, you know, you're not going to go up in there talking about putting a Quran on the altar. No, sir. No, you're not. So it's international free and accepting Mason. It is heavily rooted in Christianity. Very lucrative for the Southern. Yes, them also. International modern. As a matter of fact, international modern free used to be the same body. They had a split and this is why you have international and this is why you have modern free. National Masons are Scottish Rite Masons. Oh, brother. Oh, okay. Brother uh, Maddox answered that, Dan. Okay. Okay. I don't know much about the National Masons. I don't. Uh, if somebody can enlighten me, I appreciate it, but I don't know much about the National Masons. Um, I, I can't call it. I can't call it. Oh, he meant international. Okay. Okay. So the international masons are Scottish rights. Ah, okay. Let's break this down. Hold on, just a second. Just a second. I, I want to share this with you. When you say Scottish rights, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, four hundred. I'm looking for some. Just bear with me just real quick. Okay. Now. I'm going to read something to you that's going to be pretty. I think it's going to be pretty heavy. I'm going to read something to you that's going to be kind of like. Ooh. At an ah. Uh, for you, okay? I'm gonna give you a little history on something. 
real quick as soon as, as soon as I get done. I'm marking it off. Okay. So when you think of uh, Scottish Rite Freemasonry, you're not a Scottish Rite Mason until you have taken the Scottish Rite degrees. Period. So some Supreme Councils only deal with Scottish Rite. They don't really have nothing to do with the York Rite. Some. So you go from the first degree all the way up to the 33rd on the Scottish Rite side. Now, when you say ancient free and accept the York Rite Mason, that means that you're going the York Rite side, okay? The York Rite side of Freemasonry. So that's where you get these concepts from. That's why you have many organizations using many different levels, uh, letters, that is, many different letter, letters. And none of them, none of them come from uh, Scotland or uh, England or France or any of that. It is what they chose, just as my Grand Lodge chose ancient free and accepted Masons because we believe in the ancient concept of Freemasonry. Now, everybody has their reason to why they may choose that. But that's why my Grand Lodge, for which I'm a part of, chose that concept. Now, I'm going to read to you this. And this is on page 439, okay? Check this out. It says, the National Compact, it says, the National Grand Lodge of 1847, various lodges withdrew and were expelled. Therefore, in 1849, the agreement among the independent state grand lodges, this is where PHA comes into play, okay, uh, withdrew the national, withdrew from the national sovereign body. And I set forth in the appending, Davis, mentioned on page two, 272 and 288, Okay, now it also states that the National Compact, the Grand Lodge, held its final meeting May 16, 1877. That's what they say, that in 1877, the last meeting for the National Compact of Grand Lodges was held. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Okay, and then it goes on to state this. It says, subordinate bodies. It was 27 states belonging to this body. After everybody left, there was 27 other states left. Now, these 27 other states stayed, stayed with the Compact of Grand Lodges. Then it goes on to say on page 439, this is from my understanding. You get this book, you read it for yourself, you may come up with something different. It says, the, to these must be added a group called John G. Jones Affiliation. That's where that concept comes from in 1877. Uh, John G. Jones affiliation, as we first hear that name arise, it, uh, it comes about in 1877. Uh, Brother Stephen Smith, brother, you have this book. It's the same book that you had when you left California, Stephen Smith. It's this book. It's the same book, Cores Masonic Encyclopedia, Brother Smith. It's the same book that you had. Now, what you did with that book, I don't know. That book belongs to past Grandmaster Frank Cummins. <laughs> okay? Now, so, yeah, I know you had that book. So, now, John G. Jones, uh, that John G. Jones affiliation is not first heard of until 1877. And this is after all hell had broke loose with the National Compact of Grand Lodges. So now you had three established bodies among black Masons. You had the National Compact of Grand Lodges, you had PHA, and you have uh, John G. Jones Affiliation. You had those three. That was it. And I'm, I'm reading what they wrote about us. Not what I wrote, but what they wrote about us. Okay? Since most people like to believe what they write about us, it's not it's not our history. It's what they wrote for us about our history. You catch that when you go home. And then it goes on to say. It goes on to say that uh, the National Compact and affiliation are governed on an act of National Grand Lodge level. OK, so the National Compact of Grand Lodges are governed on a National Grand Lodge level. 
in their Prince Hall lodges and John G. Jones Grand Lodges are organized state by state. But reference to Negro le legitimacy herein below will indicate that there is no such symptomatic existence in this field. Any attempt to fall, any attempt to follow out the lineage of Negro bodies is baffling because of their numbers and uh, their numbers and complex history and incomplete records, even in modern times. For example, those who are so certain that Prince Hall bodies are strictly limited to their representative states will have a little time explaining the statement of Davis in his above mention. Uh, that was on page 81 in this book. Okay. And it goes on to say that Prince Hall Grand Lodges was not organized as a Grand Lodge of Massachusetts or any other political subdivision. It is constituted lodge that represents three different states, but its jurisdiction was only ascertained in its territories. Like the Grand Lodge of England, it was simply another grand jurisdiction, not a Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, or Rhode Island uh, institution. But in all of the Masonic world, as such, did not violate impending upon territories of any other Grand Lodge and jurisdiction. So, plain and simple, your Grand Lodge, I don't care who you are, your Grand Lodge governs the, grand, governs the lodges that come up under it. Period. So when somebody say that my Grand Lodge is really, Grand Lodges that claim that there are Grand Lodges of state, like I'm gonna I'm take Grand Lodge of California for instance, because there are multiple Grand Lodges in the state of California. The California Grand Lodges claim jurisdictions over all of those, all the, claim jurisdictions over all the lodges that works up under it. Every Grand Lodge of state, uh, I'm, I'm speaking, when I say every Grand Lodge of state, now I'm gonna speak of uh, my, my Caucasian brothers. They all claim state Grand Lodges. Hear me clearly. Grand Lodge of Massachusetts, Grand Lodge of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. When you say it like that, you're speaking strictly, strictly white Masons. And I say that because that's the majority, the majority of who's in their Grand Lodges. When you say PHA, you know who you're talking about. When you say P-H-O, we know who you're talking about. When you say modern, free, and international, we know who you're talking about. When we say ancient, free, and accepted Masons, we know who you're talking about. Without even mentioning a, a color. But we know exactly who you're talking about. Every Grand Lodge is sovereign. Every Grand Lodge runs their jurisdiction in the lodge that works under it. So what I hope that you get out of this tonight is to understand what your Grand Lodge should be doing, uh, the strength of your Grand Lodge. And, uh, and, and I want to say, Brother White, thank you for sharing the history of Modern Free with me. I have a better understanding of their history. It's, it is definitely ingrained um, in the belief of uplifting its people. The membership is a little different than the structure modern free structure is a little different. Uh, I can correct me, but from what I'm reading, that structure as far as inner apprentice, color craft, master mason is great. But as you go up that change in modern free, things begin to shift a little bit. You have sister interaction with the brothers on, on those levels, which I disagree with, but that's my own opinion. You know, but that's their structure. It's their structure. It's, it's, it's who they are. And I'm not going to kick anybody for being who they are. Okay, so, okay, uh, I was going to read something about the high degrees in Freemasonry, but that's okay, uh, wait, uh, I'll come across that. So, if you have any questions right now, I got a few minutes left, so hit me up, we can get right into it, but I was, like I said, though, I hope I was able to share some light on some things for you, especially dealing with the General Grand Masonic Congress and the whole concept of the formation of a General Grand Masonic Congress. And brothers and sisters, realize this. Sisters, the Supreme Grand Matron is not over your state. Brothers, the President General does not run your state. 
all right? Your Grand Chapter, your Grand Lodge. Come, come work with that General Grand Masonic Congress or that Supreme Council, Supreme uh, Council for Grand Chapters. They work with that entity. It is not a Masonic institution. So if anybody come to you and say that their General Grand Masonic Congress is a Masonic institution, you need to go and read up on what a General Grand Masonic is and it is not. Anybody that tells you that their Supreme uh, 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 Supreme Grand Chapter is over their state, they need to rethink that. If that is so, then you do not need a Grand Matron. If the President is more powerful than your Grand Master, you do not need a Grand Master. Period. So, like I said, a General Grand Masonic Congress does not issue dues cards. It should not issue dues cards. Okay? It should not. However, your dues card from your state can mention the mere fact that it is part of a General Grand Masonic Congress. It can mention that. United National Masons, 8, 10, let me see, Roopster Street, Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. Brother Maddox, I appreciate that. But can you give me some more information on them, though? Can you, like, just send me some and I'll talk about them? Because that's, that, that, I mean, you know, that just helps me. And also, uh, my grandmaster uh, wanted me to definitely send a big shout out and thanks for those who subscribe to the channel. And uh, pre, he, pre, he appreciates everything. And I don't just come up with this information. Uh, I have a team. And I'm going to tell you, I, 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 I'm appreciative of those who give me information. Most of you know Brother Sutton. He's been on here before. He gives me a lot of information. Okay. I like PHO the best. Try. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. You, you stand up. That's right. That's right. Uh, Brother West, for real. So, uh, I have, I have, okay. So, let me break this down to you. John G. Jones Research is it's, it's a lodge, okay? So, Brother uh, Sutton gives me quite a bit of information. I myself has an, I have a nice library. Uh, Calvin Sanders, who is now the state and grandmaster of state, he was just elected this year. Congratulations. He was originally part, well, he still is part of the uh, research lodge. There's Phil Bezier, who's part of the research lodge. Those four individuals right there that I've named has really been a, a stickler for information and making sure that whatever information we give our members, we want to make sure that they're educated on Freemasonry. So we don't go out in the community talking about Freemasonry, really not understanding the concept of Freemasonry, if you can follow what I'm saying. And our membership, if you're interested in becoming part of the uh, the research lodge, Dungeon Jones Research Lodge number 147, now, if you're really interested and you want to be a part of this, it's $5. I, I, it is $5. It is $5. That's what that's what I pay. We'll put it out. We'll, that's how we do it. It's $5 membership. Uh, $5 a month membership membership fee for uh, John G. Zones Research Lodge number 147. Um, hit me up, inbox me if you're looking at becoming a member. Um, uh, you must be a Freemason in order to be a member of uh, this particular lodge. And it, it doesn't give you visitation or nothing like that. This is strictly for research purposes. So please don't be saying that you are, you know, I'm a, I'm a member. No, no, no. This, you're a member of the research lodge, which strictly deals with researching Masonic um, uh, information. And we just put it out. We want to make sure that brothers are aware, sisters are aware. Uh, of the information we forth, we bring forth. Sons of Solomon, number 26. United Most Wishful Scottish Rite Grand Lodge. Yeah, what's up? Brothers out of Texas. All right, Brother Julian, that's right. Yeah, you missed me when I was in Texas, bro. All right, Brother Phil Jackson, you are certainly welcome, man. So if anybody else got a screenshot of their dues card, Okay, well, send, hey, you got, send it to me. If you got a screenshot of the dues card, send it to me so I can, or do you want me to send you a screenshot? Get a screenshot of the dues card. Oh, okay, I can do that. Uh, give me, hold on a minute. I'll get you a screenshot of the dues card.
I'm back. So, uh, this is the membership card right here for John G. Jones Research Lodge. So, and it's five dollars a month. It doesn't give you visitation rights. Uh, it just clearly says that you are a member of John G. Jones uh, Research Lodge number one forty-seven. That lodge, it's it's a chartered lodge, but it's not a lodge to where you go in, you open and close. It's strictly for research purposes. Okay, just so you know. Uh, I just saw something else somebody put. It. Oh, I mean of the people contacting you for information. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Bruh. I mean the people contacting you for information as you were stating. The picture of the Scottish right. Let me see. I'm going back, okay. They practice okay, so brother uh Maddox says that they practice Scottish right. Okay. Get a screenshot of the dues card. I mean the people contacting you for information as you were stating. Okay, so if you want to contact me for information, right? Is that what you're saying, Brother Lewis? I may be misunderstanding you. I, you may have to give me a shout out. Brother Lewis, give me a call so I can better understand what you're saying. Okay. I mean the people contacting you for information as you were stating. Okay. I just want to make sure I don't pass anybody up, you know, those who may have questions or whatever tonight. But I certainly appreciate you hanging on. Brother Lewis, would you please give me a call? You should have my number. You, you should. If you don't have it, then you're going to have to look me up on Facebook and inbox me. But you should have my number. I've given it out. Oh, you're, I'm talking about the United Masons. Okay, well... Y'all got me all off, all off balance tonight. You were talking about the United Masons. And, oh, oh man, y'all got me all screwed up. <laughs> y'all got me all screwed up. But anyway, I'll tell you something. This here, right here, uh, Brother Amos out of uh, New Jerusalem Grand Lodge out of Chicago put this together. Uh, this was uh, the... the uh, he put this together for the 125 year celebration for John G. Jones. So if you can get in contact with him, I think these are going for like $10 or something like that. He can, he can hook you up, bro. This is cool to have. Uh, and I say that because it goes in depth on John, on John G. Jones, some of his accomplishments and all of that stuff, you know, uh, a lot of stuff. This really goes in depth on John G. Jones and, and the work that he put forth. You know, so it's really it's, it's this is a good history. Um, this is this is full of great history and stuff like that about him. It's about uh, it's about 30 to 40 pages. So if you want to get it, Brother Amos, New Jerusalem Grand Lodge, Chicago, Illinois, he can get this to you. OK, if, if you want it. I, I, I didn't make this. He made this. All right. So. As I get ready to sign off tonight, I hope I was able to. Wait a minute. The lodge I'm seeking membership in to acknowledge John G. Jones and his accomplishment to the shrine and speaking negatively. Oh, they, wait a minute. It says the lodge I'm seeking membership in to acknowledge John G. Jones and his accomplishments to the shrine. <laughs> but they speak negatively about him being a mason. My brother, Terrell, like I said. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, I, 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 I love Nixon because he was a president of the United States and then say, because he did some corrupt stuff, we're not going to build Nixon a library. They built Nixon a library, okay? Because he was the president of the United States. You can agree to disagree about his politics, but he was indeed a president of the United States. And the same thing will go for John G. Jones in my own personal opinion. He was a mason and a shriner. So you just can't say because you didn't like him as a mason, but you're going to praise him as a shriner. Come on, man. No, 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 you, no. I'm not going to fall for the okie doke. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Brother West, 
says, I'm John G. Jones, but I'm from Florida. What they got to do with anything, Brother West? And you from, hey, bro, be safe down there. You know, you got that hurricane coming through. Be safe. But yeah, so, you know, that's my, my, my job in, in the, in, in this whole thing that we call Freemason. I just want to give you information and I want to give you truthful information. I don't want you saying, where's he getting the information from? He can't prove where he's getting it from. This is stuff that they wrote about us in their history. But if you get the revised copy of this book, it won't be in there. It will not be in there. There's two things I've learned. In black history, there are two people you won't really find. In black history, there are two people you won't find. One being a Mason, and that's John G. Jones. You won't find a lot of information on John G. Jones. That's a fact. You got to really, really go do your research on John G. Jones to find information about him. The second thing I've learned is that Elijah Muhammad, no matter what you say about the man, he produced some great individuals, but you won't find any information about him in history because they try to write them people out of history. That's my, I'm just making a, 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 a a comparison of two individuals who was controversial, okay? They were controversial individuals, and you can't really find them no, nowhere in history. You can find John G. Jones when they talk about the Shriner, but as far as being a Mason, they, they scall his name. You hear them talk about Elijah Muhammad when they talk about Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and some of the great ones, but you don't find anything on him. Yeah, he probably did some shady stuff, but you know what? You got to take the good with the bad. It was all that that individual helped create uh, a Malcolm X, of Ali, and some of the other great brothers who have come out of the nation Islam. Prince Hall, John G. Jones was part of Prince Hall. They should take pride in the fact that they helped this man, and he went on to do some great things, not, not only Masonically, but politically. And in his community, he fought. For the black community. Look at this. Look at this man being a lawyer at that time and stage in the history of the United States. Look at his works that he did. You know, come on, guys. We we gotta we gotta cut each other some slack sometime. I'm not saying that we should never hold anybody accountable. I'm just saying we should cut cut us some slack. We're so hard on ourselves, we can't even raise up to breathe because we keep holding each other down. You remember what you did? You remember what you did? Man, we're talking a hundred and some years ago. Okay? It's time for us to forgive each other. I'm not saying we shouldn't try to help each other become better or great. But come on, really? That's just my opinion. You will forgive them other folks. You will accept them other people no matter what they do to you and, for and forgive them and move on. And say it's okay. But when it comes to us, man, we, we hard on each other. Lighten up a little bit. It's really okay. Because I'm going to tell you, the way this thing is going, we're really going to need each other. Hear me clearly. That's true. Junji Jones was real. That's why. Yeah. The man was rich. They say he died broke. No, I got his obituary. The brother didn't die like that. That's real. So look, I think I've held you long enough. And for those who was able to tune on, to tune on. <laughs> those who was able to tune in tonight live, I appreciate you. If you're on the East Coast, please be safe. Get to a safe spot. Take care of you and your family. Let's appreciate one another. Uh, let's lift each other up. And uh, let's see what we can do to make a world a better place, right? So, as always, stay out those bushes. Keep your light on. As a matter of fact... Take it out, man. Let the light shine. Boom. Let it shine. Wait a minute. They say that not Prince Hall in that. <laughs> uh, Brother Maddox. That's going to be for another uh, 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 show. They say it's not Prince Hall in the grave. Oh, bruh. Do you think... You think I should you think I should do that one? 
brother, brother, brother Maddox, you think I should do that one? I'm trying to get off, bro. You, you bringing me back. You think I should do that? They see it's not Prince Hall that's in that grave? Hmm. Okay, brother Rob Lowe, um, inbox me. I think I believe we're Facebook friends. You inbox me, I send you the information and everything, okay? I'll do that. And like I said, for those of you who want to be a part of John G. Jones Research Lodge, it is just for research purposes only. Uh, it's five dollars. It's five dollars a month. So, if a hey, it's it's open, it is you know it's open. I don't care what jurisdiction you're in. It's really open, and all we're doing is bringing forth information, uh, topics, uh, things that's going to be presented on this on uh, uh, on this YouTube channel. So, tell somebody about us and what we're doing and what we're trying to uh, uh, do. For our people, uh, we just want to put out the educational aspect about Freemasonry and what it is and what it's not, you know. I mean, as far as the information we present, we don't want anyone going back talking about, oh, that's bad information. No, it's truth. It is definitely truth. Oh, you said, hell yes. <laughs> i tell you what I got to do. Brother Maddox, this is how it happens, okay? You have a topic and you want to talk about is that... Is that person in that grave? Is that Prince Hall? I would do the show, but I need you to gather me some information as I also look for the information. Then we'll I take your information, I take what I have, I will present that. That's how it's done. So just so you know, you know, being a part of the research lodge, that's how we grab, you know, we go out, we try to get all we can, and we we summarize it and we'll tell people where we got the information from and they can go. Look for themselves. That's the best way to do it. Instead of just giving people stuff, no, you got you go get it for yourself. Nobody can take it away from you. That's the importance about doing your own research, doing your own reading, and to be a part of this, it would be great. I mean, but I I don't kick people for doing their own thing. Do I need help in funding that ritual? Not until I'm done, brother Rob Lowe. When I'm done, I I tell you what. I'll give we'll we'll make contact. When I'm done with it, I definitely need your help. I, I I'll take any help I can in doing the ritual to make sure that I, I want it to be done in such a way to this it's all pointing towards the continent. Okay? It's all pointing towards the continent. So there's some things that's gonna have to be changed in there, okay? And I'll give you an example. It says from which you come. They said from the Holy St. John's of Jerusalem. No, nope, we're taking that out. No, it won't be from there. Uh, it will be another place on the continent. A, a, le a legitimate place that's going to represent who we are as a people. It's sort of that thing, okay? Oh, Dr. York. You want, you? Oh, yeah, we could do something on Dr. York. Brother Maddox, yeah, we can, we can work with Dr. York. That now, he was a monster. Oh, not a monster as in a scary person but a monster in the fact that this man was on a mission dr york was on a mission bro let me tell you we can do something on dr york you just gotta let me know when you want to do it we can we can make that happen oh for sure we can we can do that one brother said uh told me or asked me about doing something on uh international since i've done something on modern free could i do something on international I don't mind. I don't mind. It's, it's all about information. And I hope, once again, that you got something out of it. So I am going to go ahead and sign off right now. It's been 110, an hour and 10 minutes. I've been on here. So I'm going to say peace, be well. God bless you and yours. And uh, as they say, it's going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Uh, stay out them bushes and keep your light on. I'm out.